I just bought this BMW E90 330D to flip and make a profit, but first there's a few problems to fix before we can sell it. So I found this on Facebook Marketplace listed for £1,500, I managed to get it for £1,400 and if we fix everything we should be able to get about £2,500 to £3,000. But let me tell you, the game plan. First, these wheels definitely need changing, so I'm gonna get a new set of wheels. Secondly, the driver's side window switch isn't working, so I'm gonna need a new one of those. Next thing to tackle is there's a bit of a shake coming from the front of the car, so I'm gonna to have to diagnose and fix that. And then lastly, is a full service and give it a very good clean. Let's get started. So I picked up these wheels today. I paid £120 for these and a driver's side window switch from a breaker's yard. Let's get on with it. I'm, I didn't even sell it. Whoa! Shit. What the? Yeah, yeah that's a bit scary. Yeah. Um, yeah. And after that small accident, luckily we caused no damage, but thought it was more sensible to use my bigger jack inside the garage on a flat floor. We whizzed the old wheels off, fitted the new ones, and it looks a million times better. This should add some real value to the sale price of the car. It looks so much better with these new wheels and then the next thing to tackle is this window switch. Should be pretty easy, we'll get that on now. And it was easy. We just had to unclip the plastic trim, pop the old window switch out of the door, disconnect the wires and do it in reverse with the new switch assembly. Easy. That was way easier than I expected, so that's sorted, the window's working fine. I think we're going to try and tackle the shake at speed. The front pads are not sat correctly, it's not pushing on the outside of the disc and it's hanging over the inside, so it could be that. But just got to look at everything and see what seems out of place or worn out and replace it and hope that it'll sort the issue. But first we decided to give this car a quick service as it's on 190,000 miles. Although it's had a service recently, it's always helpful to have a more recent service when selling a car for maximum profit. So we drained the old oil, which thankfully wasn't sparkly, replaced the oil filter and O-rings, then talked it all down to spec and added the fresh seven and a half liters of oil. And then on to removing the wheels and the brake calipers by removing the two slide pins from behind the caliper to see if we can fix the car shaking whilst driving, because if we can't, I am in big trouble. And you don't want to let your brake caliper hang off the brake line like this because it can cause problems with brake lines, giving you a leak. And we saw the holes in the disc didn't line up with the holes in the wheel bearing and the retainer screw is completely... And also, the pad wasn't contacting this whole area of the disc. <sighs> but I didn't have the parts to change the wheel bearings and discs, so continued with the wind back tool, pushing the brake caliper piston back, allowing us to insert the new brake pads. We gave the disc and slide pins a good clean, then greased up the pads where it sits on the caliper bracket. That's far too much. And the slide pins, but you shouldn't really use copper grease for this as it can wear the rubber covers. I don't think the brake pads were sat correctly because the previous owner must have been an absolute f moron and fit how, them back how, to front. Them now it's time for Will's <laughs> first brake job. Just push in, mate. Like. What? <laughs> That's so that Yeah, so them, them outside legs, no, they go on the other side. Oh, they do. They do. Guy, you're messing with me. I'm not. No. I'm off again, check. Fucking off. Doesn't make sense. Like this, yeah? Do you want me to do it? No, I want to do it. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And after a few cocky comments from me, I thought I'd show Will how a professional oh, gets it no. done. <laughs> it didn't go to plan. Want me to show you how to do it? <laughs> it's because the way I'm sat, it's uncomfortable. Ah. Two weeks later. <laughs> See, it's not that hard, Will. That took two seconds. Then I popped it off again so Will could do it on his own. Then. Time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, so gonna take it for a test drive. Hope that fixed the shake under braking over like 40 mile per hour. I'm not hopeful. I think it might need new discs and hubs because um, whoever put that retaining clip in and the disc not lining up with the holes in the hub. Um, yeah, good job. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. But more on that later. The excitement didn't last very long. Gonna have to do the front discs and wheel bearings. I did think this flip was going way too easy. When Will was driving on the test drive, I used the window and the window regulator decided to snap. So I've got a new one of them. I'm gonna fit that, get the fronts done, and then 
finally get this car listed and sold I hope there's a hole in the window so you push that green tag to the other side of the window and then the window slides out but other than that it is pretty simple just unplug everything undo these three bolts to remove the window regulator from the door then tilt it and slide it out of the way so I'm not sure why but this motor has got stuck and clogged up and this little plastic bit here has snapped off from in there might get 15 quid for that Walk out the profit. And then it's just a case of doing everything in reverse, but you might have to do a procedure to tell the ECU where the top or bottom of the window should be. On this car, you wind the window all the way down and hold the button there for over five seconds. Right, so that's fixed now. Buzzing. Finally, we reattached the sound deadening, plugged in all the cables and the door handles into the door card, then pushed it back into its clips, bolted it in, and secured all the door trim again. Then time to change the wheel bearings and discs. The caliper came off again. Then the caliper bracket with these two bolts on the back. Have you seen them, uh, we needed to take the wheel speed sensor out with a 5mm <laughs> Allen key and luckily managed to undo these makeshift retaining bolts with a flattened screwdriver and got the discs off. Now this is when we realised how difficult it was going to be removing these four wheel bearing bolts coated with Loctite. <laughs> We're having a bit of trouble with these wheel bearing bolts at the back. They're so tight, they've got Loctite on. I genuinely thought this would be a really easy job, but not easy at all. So on one of these bolts, I managed to squeeze in a socket and breaker bar to save my hands from getting absolutely ravaged. But unfortunately, the rest would only fit a small bar and... The last one is underneath the bottom of the damper, so I've had to go and get some drop down spanners and I'm hoping this works, but it's gonna really hurt my hands because these are the tightest bolts that I've ever got off. They're all Loctite, so getting them past the Loctite is horrible. We managed to get three off on each side, so it's just these two bolts left now and then the job will be done, ready to put up for sale. Hopefully, gonna make a lot of profit. When you're wrenching on spanners, big padded gloves really help you uh, not rip your hands apart. We're sorry to interrupt your programming with a short word from our sponsor. Take it away, corporate Josh. If you're like me, you're either working hard or having fun. Harder. And the last thing I want to be doing is picking a recipe, going shopping, ugh, moist. And then measuring all the ingredients, having food waste. And that's where HelloFresh comes in. HelloFresh delivers tasty meals to your door. All the ingredients are measured out for you and most of the meals take less than 30 minutes to make. Giving me more time to work hard and have fun hard. So use the code JOSH2023 for 60% off your first order and 25% off your next two months, plus free gifts. Fireworks, explosions, boom, boom, boom. Eight hours later, after finally getting the last bolt out, the old bearings knocked off pretty easily with a few taps from a hammer, which was a very Happy welcome days. surprise. Then I got to cleaning the area with some brake cleaner and straight on to fitting the new wheel bearing assembly, which went on far easier than the old one came off. I am knackered, I can hardly stand up, I don't know why. I need to go to the gym more often, but that really takes it out of you. But enough complaining. Time to change the brake caliper on the front right, because during our test drive, I noticed it was sticking a little bit. So I replaced this with a new one, just unbolting the brake line and screwing it into the new caliper. That is the caliper changed. Didn't get the disc on. So I had to hire Tom, the engineer, to use his torque wrench, but all Four of them bolts now are torque to spec to 70 newton meters. And with that finally done, it's important to use a alcohol-based cleaner for new brake discs to remove the slippery protective coating that it comes with from the factory. Then we fitted the new discs, bled the brake system, which always has to be done when you're exposing the brake lines to air, just by loosening off the bleed nipple and having someone in the car pump the brakes on and off. And with that, there's one more thing to do. Get this car cleaned up and ready to list for sale. 
As usual, all the products I'm using in the video will be listed in the description. And if you're thinking of buying anything, it really helps if you grab them through the links so I can earn a tiny bit of commission on each sale, meaning I can buy better and more interesting cars to flip for you guys. I always start off on the wheels with a soft brush and a pH neutral wheel cleaner with fallout remover in it. Then I moved on to the traffic film remover to get rid of the road grime stuck on the bodywork. And after I've rinsed that off, it's onto the snow foam to help break down the dirt on the car and remove it without causing any any scratches. Not forgetting to get into all the tight spaces with a soft bristled brush before rinsing it off. Next we gave the car a good hand wash with soft microfiber mitts and a good quality car shampoo. We rinsed it off in small sections to stop the soap drying on the bodywork because it was a hot day and this can cause marks. Always use good quality drying towels to avoid marring or scratches and try to use as little pressure as possible when using a towel. Car detailing can be a bit of a rabbit hole, but if you do your research, you can make a car look so much more expensive with some time and effort, meaning more profit, bye bye. We gave the car a well needed clay bar all around as it was covered in baked in dirt and grime and then onto the machine polishing to get rid of the dull paintwork and scratches And the first pass already looks so much better. I felt like most, maybe all of the swirl marks. Whilst the boys machine polished the car, I got the leather seats inside cleaned and conditioned, not only to make them look brand new, but to smell brand new as well. And as I wipe off the product from the seat, you can see how much cleaner the top of the seat looks than the bottom. This whole process did take hours, and that's with my friend's help, but I finally got round to giving the car that last hand polish to add some gloss and even a bit of added protection. It was looking 10 years younger. Tom got the heavy cutting compound out with a hard foam applicator and rubbed away at this orange mark left by another car and it almost completely disappeared. Again, adding valuable potential profit to the car. <laughs> it has been a very long day, but we've finally finished the machine polishing and hand polishing. I'm thinking about listing it for about three and a half thousand, obviously some wiggle room in the price there. I want this a quick flip because the last one went so bad, I just need to get a few more under my belt. And with that comes the tire shine, and then the fake ceramic coating, which I've tested and does last six to 12 months with really good protection and hydrophobic property. The interior was pretty much pristine when we bought the car, but I've got some new floor mats all around just to add that showroom look when somebody comes to view. And now for the big reveal. This BMW is looking pretty sexy, and I can't wait to make a deal with someone. I've listed it for three and a half grand, so we'll see where we go from there. Now this car was a lot harder to sell than I thought it was going to be. It's been about three months waiting to get some good money for this car and I can finally say it has gone. After eBay auctions with people not turning up, people messing me around on Facebook Marketplace, I've finally made a deal to sell this car for £2,450. So after paying £1,400 for the car, £15.85 for the mats, £115 for the service, £120 for the new wheels and the window switch, £30 for the window regulator, £16.99 for the brake caliper, £51.96 for both wheel bearings, £80 quid for the two front discs, £30 on eBay fees and £40 on tax. I ended up selling the old wheels and getting £100 for them, which is pretty good in my opinion. After all that work, I only got £650 profit. I thought it was going to be way higher, but I think people just stopped buying these cars. The prices have gone through the floor, and that's not something I could have anticipated. 
but I've got some really good flips coming next. I've got a modified one coming out soon, and I've just bought an absolute bargain. So subscribe and go and watch this video if you haven't already.